Welcome back to Rachel's Enchanting Cakes and today we're going to be doing that delicious chocolate cake that you've just seen in the picture. So this is what you're going to need firstly just to make half of the actual cake. I'm making it in two halves. The image in the picture is an eight inch square Belgian chocolate cake. So in my mixer I have 175 gram of caster sugar and 275 gram of butter. We're just going to be creaming that together in the mixer a little bit later on. Here I've got 425 gram of Belgian chocolate. This is 55% cocoa solids. The higher the cocoa solids, the better the chocolate, the best it will be in your cake. That is what you want. Flour, 275 gram. Icing sugar. Bet you weren't expecting that one. 70 gram, I'll show you why and explain why a little later on. And here, 10 eggs. Bear in mind, this is just for half of your eight inch square cake. I like to do these in separate halves rather than doing it all in one mix. And you'll understand why, because we're going to end up with an awful lot of cake batter, which you can then level. You sandwich them together and you can create any beautiful creation you want if you don't want to stick chocolates to it. So let's get cracking. Okay then, so I've just creamed my mixture and I'm going to put an image on for you now so you know when it's being creamed correctly. After looking at that image, you'll notice that there's no grains of sugar left. That's when you know your creaming's finished and basically we've just mixed the butter and the sugar together but we haven't overmixed it. Whilst I was doing that, I've separated my eggs. So I've got my 10 egg yolks here. And I've just moved my icing sugar out of the way for a moment. And those are my egg whites, which we are going to be using soon. So the next job is just to simply add your egg yolks to the mixture. I'm not going to boil you to death. So I shall just start the process. And you'll notice that I'm just going to add a little bit of flour each time. So if we just put on our mixer, just like a little bit of egg yolks and a tiny, tiny bit of flour because you're not actually adding many eggs so it's unlikely to curdle. Keep on doing that. I'm going to finish this process off with the rest of the eggs and show you what to do next. Okay, so now I'm just going to add another picture so you can see what it should look like once you've added those lovely egg yolks. It's a really golden, soft looking, no curdling, absolutely perfect. What I've done now, I've melted the Belgian chocolate. I like to do this in a microwave, not over a stove, and I just do it for 30 seconds at a time. This will prevent you from actually burning the chocolate by accident. So we're just going to add all of this to our butter, sugar and eggs that are all mixed and incorporated together. So to make this easier, I'm just going to remove the bowl, pour all of the chocolate in, just like that. Remember, this is really decent chocolate, so get as much out of there as you possibly can. You don't want to be wasting any. Okay, we're going to use our spatula now to put the majority out. It's only got cake mix on there, it's all going into the same pot. That's lovely. Right then. So, this now wants to go back on the mixture until it's all incorporated beautifully. If I just whack it onto there, like so, get it on, there we go. And we'll just mix it. I'm going to show you now what you actually need to do with the eggs and the flour to get that perfect chocolatey bake. Okay then, so we're almost there. This is the final part. So what is the deal with the eggs? Well, if you've watched the Victoria's sponge recipe, it's all about beating in air to make your cake rise. This is why we don't actually need baking powder. Once you get used to doing it, and you can prevent curdling, you can have a beautifully moist, airy cake that's risen absolutely gorgeously without needing any baking powder whatsoever. It just takes practice, time, and patience. Because we've added so much chocolate to this, and I'm just going to add an image now so you can see what it should look like. Okay, 
as you can see there's no curdling whatsoever and now in here we have butter, sugar, egg yolks and Belgian chocolate. What we're going to do now with the eggs is add the air to it when we decide to fold in the flour. So we're going to beat the eggs so they're a bit like a meringue, add lots of air to it and that 70 gram of icing sugar. So your first job is to get a handheld mixer, it's much easier, and just beat this constantly until we have the right consistency. So I'm going to keep on beating this and then I will come back to you and show you pictures and what it should look like before I go and add the icing sugar to this mixture. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a picture to what this really, really looks like. Right, that is what you want, you want soft peaks. Now all I've done is whisked the egg whites. What I'm going to do now is add all of my icing sugar. And then you literally just need to whisk this in again. So, put the mix back on. It is a little messy, I'm not going to lie. And once this is done, I'll show you the consistency again. Okay, so now I'm going to add one more picture so you can see what you will have at the final stages. You can see how everything's been beautifully incorporated. And now the secret to get this cake lovely, moist and airy, not as dense as you get when you normally use chalk, melted chocolate in a cake. We're going to fold in alternatively the egg whites and the flour. And if you do it correctly, take your time with it because everything, we don't need our mixer anymore now, we're going to do all of this by hand. It will come out lovely. So first of all, a big dollop. everywhere, I won't lie, I've got flour, uh, icing sugar, sorry, everywhere I was doing this. Some self-raising flour, and tea chocolate mixture. Not all of it, remember we're doing it in stages. Get your good old spatula and literally round and down. My face is towards the camera, round and down. That's how you get the air into your cake. Round, straight through the centre. Round, straight through the centre. I'm going to continue to do this for the rest of my mixture, so I don't bore you to death, and then I'll show you what the, your final cake batter will actually look like. We're almost there. I'm just going to add one more image so that you can see what the mixture should look like once it's all incorporated beautifully. And there's your cake batter. Now what I'm going to do, I just want to show you a little tip. This is one of my 8 inch square cake tins. Now what I've done to this, apart from adding the floor to the bottom, mine's a loose based cake tin, and some of the fat can come out and actually go all over your oven, so I like to add foil around the base, all the fat then goes into the foil rather than us having to clean the oven out afterwards. We will notice, this is an, a nail from a DIY store, I must point that out. Um, this, these you can get from PME baking stores, they're actually flour nails. Uh, but I use the metal ones and it just helps conduct heat through the centre of the cake to make sure everything's baked evenly without it actually burning. It really does help, especially with larger cakes, so that's a good tip for you. So all you need to do now is add this lovely batter to your cake pan. Now, remember what I said earlier, this is only half of the cake and you're probably thinking, how many eggs? How much chocolate? Because this means technically, you're gonna be using nearly one kilogram of Belgian chocolate just for one cake. You need to take that into consideration when pricing your cakes. But it will make you stand out from other bakers. How many other bakers are going to use a really expen expensive Belgian chocolate cake at 55%? Your cakes are going to taste different. Definitely different to what you get from the supermarkets as well. So that's something you need to take into consideration. At the end of the day, as your bakers will know, people get what they pay for. The more chocolate you add to the cake afterwards, like what you see in the decoration, when we do the decoration process again, 
it's expensive. So all these things you really do need to think about before pricing your cakes. I always charge extra for my Belgian chocolate cake and this is why. But if you have watched the Victoria sponge recipe, if you're not from Britain and you've never done a Victoria sponge, please give it a try, I'll absolutely love it. You'll realise it's an awful lot quicker to make a Victoria sponge than it is to make these. These take twice as long. And it's just because of all the air white, um, sorry, egg whites that you're having to whisk up and melt the chocolate. So it's your time as well. Never undersell yourself and never sell yourself short. So there we go. Now I'm going to place this into an oven on 180 degrees centigrade for about one hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half. Depending on your oven, the cheaper the oven or the older the oven, it might not be working like it says it's working. So I always recommend getting an oven thermometer. If you're having a problem with burning cakes and they're not cooked in the middle or they're suddenly sinking it could be, it could be the seal on the door I've had that issue in the past with cheaper ovens or it could just simply be that your thermostat isn't a really good thermostat so it's always things to take into consideration happy baking guys so this is the recipe for the Belgian chocolate cake and then I shall be back with a separate tutorial on what I actually did to cover the cake with all those delicious chocolates I'll see you soon